team investigator Katie Legrone is giving us an in-depth look at how Stand Your Ground has evolved and ultimately if it's made us any safer. I think we're ready to begin. It started with a cell phone in a movie theater and ended in death. And I see his eyes were just glazed over and I knew at that moment. Eight years later, 79-year-old Curtis Reeves is in the midst of his murder trial. You can't say specifically what they were talking about. Chatter. I'm good. Using claims of self-defense and stand your ground. So now, not only is his voice elevated, he is now moving closer to Mr. Reeves. To keep him from potentially spending the rest of his life behind bars. Well, then you gotta come down, right? Yes, sir. Reeves was a retired police captain when he shot and killed 43-year-old Chad Olson after an argument over Olson using his cell phone escalated to Olson eventually throwing popcorn at Reeves, authorities say. Never been that scared before in all my life. It's a case that has self-defense scholars and the legal community watching closely. In 2005, I can guarantee you a case like this would not even have made it as far as it has. Our society was not as desensitized as it is today. Janae Thomas is an attorney and former state prosecutor in Tampa. With this one, it literally could go either way. And that's what makes it to me so interesting. Caroline Light is a Harvard University professor who wrote a book on the evolution of Stand Your Ground following the death of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, unarmed when he was shot and killed by George Zimmerman, a then neighborhood watch captain who claimed Martin attacked him. While Stand Your Ground was not part of Zimmerman's defense at the time, it pushed the little known law into the national spotlight where today it remains intact but controversial. Somehow what Stand Your Ground laws are able to do selectively is to reverse the roles of victim and perpetrator. Both believe what happens in the Curtis Reeves case could have historic impacts on the future use of self-defense and stand your ground. A law Florida was first to adopt in 2005 and has since been adopted by more than 30 other states. If this ends up in an acquittal, it is definitely a landmark, absolutely. Because I think it adds additional fuel to this impetus to continue stretching selectively the boundaries of lethal self-defense. That's going to open the floodgates for these stand your ground cases because now we're going to say that people can go into public places, they can be armed, they can start a confrontation because that's, that's what the evidence shows. The victim was on a cell phone, so he then proceeds to start a confrontation with the victim and then he shoots them. While proponents say stand your ground, which in Florida removes a person's duty to retreat from a threat before using deadly force, makes the public safer by deterring attackers, critics have long maintained it encourages violence. In a study released just this week, stand your ground laws were linked to an 11 percent rise in homicides across the country, with the biggest jumps in southern states, including Florida. So this all is just a very, very treacherous pendulum we're going down. Distance, lighting, noise. What the jury concludes from the Curtis Reeves trial remains to be seen. So too is its potential impact on future gun violence cases, especially this scholar and attorney say if the shooter walks away. This means more people with guns seeing a certain right to use lethal aggression and, and, to, and then say after the fact they were in fear for their life and be believed. This to me is terrifying. So I'll be watching it till the very end because I think all of us should be because I think it's going to say a lot about where our society is and the temperature of what our society is willing to tolerate. I'm my team investigator Katie Legrone taking action for you.